In this video, we're going to talk about crowd triggers. In the previous concept video, I talked about animation states and locomotion and how the origin is configured for each agent and how that affects the animation being played in, in its uh, crowd states. In this video, we're going to trigger those animation states. So you need a trigger to make the animation state play. Throughout this series, we've always had an initial state. So that means the crowd simulation would start the agent off in an initial state. The agent would start running. But you're seen to be interesting. You have multiple states. You have multiple animations. The character needs to be able to do multiple things. And that's the beauty of the crowd simulation in Houdini. To be able to set up a fairly large scene with lots and dozens and dozens, possibly even hundreds to thousands of agents moving about, having their own animation states going on, and having them react to the environment in the scene. Basic concept number 6a, crowd triggers. In this example, I have this little blue agent, which is our basically our main character over here, this guy. And this little dude will be starting off in the running state, and then he's going to jump when he gets to this state. So there's a trigger that happens here that triggers the jump. He lands and he returns back to the running state, and that's caused by a second trigger. He runs towards the crowd, which slowly triggers the green crowd of agents to walk away. And as they walk away, it, they turn into purple. So it triggers, that's like the third trigger. But if you look carefully, our protagonist blue character here will turn into, as he blends in with the crowd, he turns, um, he turns purple as well. That means our protagonist character slowly blends in with the crowd and turns into a walking state, which is another separate trigger. So let's do a summary count. First, you start off with the initial state, the running state. So that's not triggered by anything. The jump is the first trigger, and then back to the running, that's the second trigger. Then it triggers the green crowd of agents, which is a third trigger, and our protagonist character blends in with the purple walking away crowd, which is the fourth trigger. So there's actually four triggers going on in here. And let's take a look at the... Um, the crowd simulation, and that's where my dot net is. So there is four triggers here, and this is what makes it all happen. Or let me let me turn the background black so you can actually see it. I'll turn off the the grid. So the jump. I'll explain why these two purple boxes are over here. One is the smaller box, which our protagonist is obviously trying to jump over. However, it doesn't look right when we when we enter the dot net. And I'll explain in just a bit why and why it looks different from what I've shown you in like the final render or the final version. In the dot net, it has to do with the trigger point. What I'm rendering is a modified version of what is causing the trigger. It's sort of like cheating a, a bit. The larger purple box over there is detecting the re-entry to detect when the character lands. So we're going to explore different types of crowd triggers in order to make something simple like this happen. Let's go into the crowd simulation setup. So this is where the dot net of the crowd simulator, the crowd solver is going to be all set up. So we have that uh, small group of crowds and we have our little protagonist character over here that's going to run towards the crowd. He's going to encounter a stage point that I've set up for the crowd trigger that I'm calling stage points right now. This is set up so that we have this here. So this is the position of our agent. I'm going to... Okay, there you go. That's this setup. Now the other one, the crowd, the crowd of people is actually these purple nodes over here. So if I come here, you'll see all these dots here. The positioning of this small purple group of agents comes from this circle geometry, which is also coming from another context. Everything is driven by this stage points node. All the, the obstacles, or, or sorry, the trigger points are all set up here. So if I change the position of the trigger points, it will update everything automatically. It's, it, that's the nice thing of having everything in one place. So let's go back to the crowd setup. You can see that all these dots are set up using these nodes. Uh, they're fed into the crowd source. And this instantiates our agent that we've already set up, that I've shown you how to set up in previous concept videos, it instantiates all the agents to these dots. So these dots represent where we want the agent to be positioned. Let's go into the dot net and look at how we set up the crowd triggers. Okay, I'm going to turn off the points. Now I'm going to be doing this from scratch. I'm going to delete all the crowd triggers, and we're going to do it from scratch. And we're going to 
So let's take all this and delete it. Since we're not dealing with this crowd of people on the side for the very first trigger that we set up, because our main character is going to jump over the box. So the box is going to trigger everything and it won't have anything to do with these guys. I'm going to remove them first, just temporarily, and I'll add them back in when we get to the last trigger. So let's go here and I'm just going to take all this and I'm going to ignore it. Actually, I don't really have to do it. Sure, let's take all this and ignore it. And then I'm going to take this and connect it here. So it's not even connected to the crowd store. Let's go back into the .NET. So we only have one character running in, in the running initial state. And it'll run forever because there's nothing else. Uh, there's no trigger points that activate any other state. Now at the beginning, what do we need first? We need a crowd trigger. Crowd trigger. To actually trigger, uh, to have something to trigger the, the next state. And we also need a crowd transition to tell, okay, when the crowd triggers, what are you going to do? That they go hand to hand crowd transition drop that in connect it and then we're going to connect this to the very last input of the crowd crowd solver that's where all the crowd triggers happen now let's take a look at the crowd trigger now we have different types of triggers that we that are available to us we want our character to get close to that small box and jump over the box so what we want is the object distant to position to detect the distance between an object and the agent. So this one, this trigger is perfect. Now we can specify what the object is and we know what it is. It's our little box. So let me pick it off here. Now that would be in the props. So let's expand that. And then I named it box trigger. So that's this guy over here. And let's take a look. Okay, let's just run it nothing happens so let's run it and nothing happens he just runs by the box well we haven't actually set up the crowd transition as well we need to tell houdini what to do when this trigger is activated what do you want to happen the crowd transition will allow us to configure what animations to play from what state to another state the input state that means what are you starting off with well we're starting our character our main character starts off running so it's in the initial state, he's running. That's all he's doing. So the input state, which is where he's coming from, is running. So let's go down here and choose running. Now, what does it end up doing? What do we want to transition to? What do we want to happen? We want him to jump because we want to jump over the box. So we're going to choose jump up. Okay, let's run this again. Yeah, you can see that we have successfully triggered the jump and he jumps over the box. As I mentioned before, he's overlapping with the box during the animation. And that was the reason why I am rendering the actual box that gets rendered is pushed over just a bit just to cheat it. Because of my animation isn't perfect, I created it with manual keyframes, like doing one keyframe at a time. So it's not exactly. I mean, I could go back and fix it keyframe by keyframe, either that or just move the box over just for rendering. Because this is not the box that gets rendered go back up here go back up here in the props you can see it looks right here it looks fine because this is what is going to get rendered i simply pushed the box over so let's take a look at this this is the box that we're actually feeding into the crowd trigger this is the box over here that's actually being rendered so let me put flag over here render flag over here you can see that it is slightly moved over it doesn't affect the crowd simulation just because this part is just getting rendered out, but we're not feeding it into the crowd trigger. This is the part that gets simulated because we're feeding the out box trigger into the crowd, um, in the, into the crowd simulation. So that's a nice way of cheating it, sort of. Okay, let's go back into the crowd simulation, into the .NET. Like, that's how easy it is to trigger this. But as you can see, he's sliding all the way through. One, it's because when I had this jump up animation state set up, I disabled the looping. So the looping here is disabled, which makes sense because I only want him to jump one. Now, crowd simulations are all based on particles. This agent is actually a particle with a velocity set on him. So he just moves forever. The state, the actual animation state, just plays as it is. 
and Houdini doesn't have any concept of oh jump up stay put or whatever like I what I've explained in the previous concept video locomotive and in place animations that's where you have to tell Houdini what to do or how to how how to interpret the animation state we're gonna set up the next crowd trigger to follow up with this so he's not actually gonna stop there so we don't need him to pause in in the jump I actually want him to jump forward and then I want him to start running so I don't want him to stop so let's add another crowd trigger our second one crowd trigger now what do I want him to do in this uh, second crowd trigger after the jump I want him to start running again. I don't want him to continue sliding his feet. He's going in the right direction. He's not animating the way I want. So I actually have another box. Let's go back up into our stage uh, point. And that would be stage two. So you can see that stage two is actually based off of stage one. Wherever stage one goes, um, stage two will, will go as well. Stage two is where the character lands or the agent will land. They go in pairs. Let's go back to the prop and you can see here, this is where my landing box happens. And this is just another, it's a bigger box because I don't know where the agent will actually land. And this is not gonna get rendered. There is no box landing, landing pad or anything that gets rendered out. So this box can be as big as I want in order to guarantee that it will get triggered. So we're gonna feed this box, this large purple box into our crowd solver. Let's go into the crowd, dot net, and our second crowd trigger. What do we want? This, uh, the, the default is object bounce, which is perfect. That's actually what we want. I want the character to trigger the next condition on the bounds when they enter the bound. And we have this set to incoming, which is perfect because we only want the agent to trigger upon entering the box not leaving it because if you look carefully there's incoming outgoing continue we only want him to trigger when he lands into the box or goes into the box let's feed in that big purple box let's go here and let's go to the props and landing so that's this guy over here okay let, let's just give it a try oh actually uh sorry it's not gonna work because we need a crowd transition so i forgot about that okay let's add our crowd transition because after the trigger happens, activates, we need to tell Houdini what to do. What's the input state? What are we going, coming from? Well, our character is coming from the jump up state. After the character jumps up, this is the part. Let me zoom in, actually. So after the character jumps up right here, we want, that's our input state of this trigger. We're coming from the jump up state. So let's choose this. And we're, what do we want to end up with? We want to end up running again. I just want to jump over the box and continue running. So let's do the running again. Okay, let's zoom out. And I'm going to... I also need to connect this to the rest of... Uh, to the crowd so solver. How do we connect multiple crowd triggers or uh, crowd states into the one input of the crowd solver? So if you look here, we only have one input here. Well, how do we connect this? Well, we can merge it together. So we'll take all this, merge this, connect it to the last input. And instantly you can see that the viewport will be updated and you'll see that very large landing box that we have created, that large purple box. So that's a good sign that it's working. It's doing something. So let's play this and see how well it works. So it's not happening. In the next video, I'll continue on with the second crowd trigger and explain why it's currently not working yet. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.